Hello, welcome to Call It Like I See It, presented by Disruption Now. I'm James Keyes, and today we are going to continue our discussion on the cost of living squeeze being felt by American families, the trend of divestment of fossil fuels possibly picking up steam, and the dispute around the massive database of facial recognition images that has been compiled by the company Clearview AI. Tunde Ogunlana is still here with me, and we're recording this on February 9th, 2020. We released part one a couple of days ago, and in that we focused on some of the factors contributing to the raw deal American workers are getting out of our booming economy. So Tunde, I wanted to jump right back in and discuss the recent news that Georgetown University, my alma mater for law school, go Hoyas, announced that it will be divesting from fossil fuels and fossil fuel, you know, fossil fuel industries and, and places where they invest in fossil fuels. Um, seem like a pretty big deal. I know that they're not the first, but they're the most recent of this looks to be a trend of people getting out of the investment in final investing in fossil fuel companies and industries. Uh, what do you see with that, man? Um, it's a very interesting. I think it's just a continued um, continued march towards this, uh, you know, this kind of global push to find the alternative to fossil fuels. So it just it's, it's another kind of symbolic, uh, I guess, just look for me that 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 more and more, I guess, serious institutions, whether it be corporations, these universities, you name it, or countries, are just really taking this serious. So, you know, I would say it, because I, I'm very clear with my thought that I think that humans have, um, through the use of fossil fuels over the last 100, 150 years, have been part of the increase in, in, in the warming of the planet. I mean, I think the science and the data is pretty obvious. And anyone that understands kind of how chemistry works at a, at a basic level understands that more carbon in the air will trap more heat. So, and yeah, if, I mean, and, just, to, so let me, just let me jump in real quick. Yeah. Just to, I'm going to just like the issue with that at its core is that we are releasing carbon, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere at an incredible pace since the Industrial Revolution by burning fossil fuels. This is carbon that was previously captured at carbon dioxide by plants and, and things like that over millions of years, and we're dumping it all back into the air right now. And that carbon then affects the climate. It affects, as we're going to talk about here shortly, um, the how, how as, as the, the acidity um, of the pH of the oceans, things like that. So that's yeah, the issue at its and, core, and that's why you say that it's kind of the, the science is not really in dispute. It's not disputed that we're releasing tons of carbon, uh, much, you know, just massive amounts of carbon. And it's not really disputed what all of that carbon does. So go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I agree. And, and it's sad because I look, I prepping for our show today, it reminded me in 2015, I took a geology class at the local university out of curiosity, honestly. And the class was a um, 3000 level class specifically about how humans uh, extract natural resources out of the earth uh, through, you know, a geology class and it was just fascinating i learned so much and one thing i learned was that they just broke it down how everything what you just said uh, works from from the fact that plants uh animals um are really starting with plants harvest the sun's energy through photosynthesis and then you know then the cows eat the plants we eat the cows and then you well, know all they, of, they, all they harvest the sun's energy through you know they got salt sun energy and then also carbon dioxide in the air they Correct. use both of those but, to make their energy yeah. and, and just to fast forward the whole explanation is is at the end of the day all organic material when after we die right it, over millions of years it gets pressed into the earth and creates several different things but two of the main ones are oil and coal and those are the last remnants uh, when they are burned that is literally the last remnants of energy from that initial um, chain of energy from the sun through the from planet. The I mean, it's actually yep. fascinating when yep. you think about it. The other thing I learned in that class, which is cool, is because of that, because it takes life to create some of these materials like clay. Um, you know, clay is also a, a somewhat form of uh, from organic material, um, but specifically, like we're talking on this subject, oil and um, and, uh, and and coal. That so far, until we find life on another planet, uh, Earth is the only planet that has specifically those um, those elements uh, the, because they come from organic materials. So just some fascinating stuff. But again, 
I'm not saying you got to take a geology class in college to, to <laughs> understand this stuff, but what I mean is there is a, there is a subtle um, need to have a basic understanding of certain just scientific facts, like a basic understanding of chemistry or what carbon is, to be able to at least accept this reality um, and know that the reason is not to blame humans like we're so evil, but just the reason that this is happening is because the Earth for billions of years uh, has evolved and morphed, and it's true. I mean, I've heard people that deny the, 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 the fact that humans have created, have um, influenced any climate change. Oh, that the, the Earth climate changes uh, over periods of time, and that's true. But most of those changes happen over thousands of years at the minimum, uh, and, you know, through tens of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. So the fact that these changes have happened really in the last hundred years or so um, is, is, is points to the evidence that the earth can't keep up and absorb the extra carbon that we are exponentially putting out. And then don't even get us talking about what's happened just in the last six months between these, these two massive fires, one in the Amazon and the other in Australia. Um, that the amount of carbon that must have been pumped in the air is just more stuff that the earth's not going to absorb. And now we have less trees <laughs> globally for it to, to be absorbed. So all this to be said, I know I'm getting maybe a little bit too much off tangent into a science talk, but all that said is to say that, you know, the, the climate is changing and I'm glad that now the universities, you know, along with some of these big corporations are just taking this serious because again, we all got to live on this earth. This shouldn't be a political issue. This shouldn't be, you know, something that people want to argue. And I've also said this, let's forget about climate change and that whole discussion for a second. Let's say that there is no such thing as climate change and that burning of fossil fuels and carbon, you know, more carbon in the air has nothing to do with anything. To me, like oil and coal are still dirty at the end of the day. Like if we can start pushing um, more technology towards solar and wind, you know, you're not going to have oil spills. You're not going to have just dirty things happen. So I just think that whether one believes truly in the climate science or not, the idea of just over time jettisoning fossil fuels makes sense. And again, I say over time. Yeah. And I don't not, say, you know, I don't, I don't have a fantasy that we're going to be off fossil fuels by 2030. I mean, obviously, we have a big system in the world. You know, planes, trains, and automobiles run a certain way right now. But I think if, if as humanity, if we wanted, just like we wanted to put a man on the moon, we did it. If we want to get off fossil fuels by the year 2100, we probably can, if the will is there. I mean, we could so, probably do it in 10 years if we wanted to. Like, yeah. I would think getting to the moon is a bigger stretch in the abstract than getting off fossil fuels. Like, fossil fuels aren't just dirty. Uh, they're also in a fit, relatively inefficient. Uh, you know, like there's, so there's a lot of other ways yeah, to, I mean, to harness If you look at power. just how a Tesla works versus my car, which is not a Tesla, right? A combustible engine. Um, you're right. This the inefficiencies. You know, the Tesla has no starter, no alternator. It's battery to axle. Yeah. With 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 our cars, right? I got you know spark plugs, pistons. You know, there's all this mo mechanics and movement of stuff. That in the end, you know, was efficient 100 years ago, but now we've got well, new technology. Well, it was relatively efficient. It Correct. was, it was and, better and than a horse-drawn carriage. Exactly. But, but then, like, so, yeah. we, we should well, look to improve. I feel like it's improve. getting on a tangent, bro. We're about to... <laughs> well, no, I'm trying to get there. Uh, okay. We should look to improve on what we're doing at all times. Just like, you know, the, the horses, horse-drawn carriages worked. They could get you from point A to point B, but we look to improve and fossil fuels allowed us to do that. So we shouldn't have some irrational attachment to them. Like we should still be looking to improve. And so I think this is significant, though, because this type of trend is how the change can happen. Like everybody's looking to the government, wants the government to make the change, which, you know, that, that's fair. You know, like we should ask the government to, 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 to raise standards and to, to try to hold us to a higher standard. Oh, it blows my mind all the time. These big bad guys who say they're so cool or they're, say they're so amazing and so smart. Like these guys never want anybody to challenge them and say, hey, do better, you know, but whatever. Yeah. Like that, that's a, a side note. Like I think we should hold ourselves to a higher standard. We should try to. So, I mean, I, I'm not railing against trying to get the government to hold people to higher standards. But at the same time, change actually can also happen in other ways, like where people are putting their money. And so if you're going, if you're taking your money out of investment in fossil fuels and putting it into more uh, sustainable sources of energy, that's how you can make things happen. That's how the technology for solar or for wind or for geothermal or whatever else we want to do can actually get on par and then ultimately surpass 
the that of fossil fuels. Because one thing that's not deniable is like fossil fuels, they're hard to get to, you know, like they're not overly efficient. If we can figure out how to harness the energy of the sun, I mean, that's plentiful. That's something <laughs> that yeah. you know we can use as, as long as we want and we can do whatever we want with it. So like being able to move towards that, but there needs to be money put behind it. And so government putting money behind it or, or putting regulations up that make it less desirable to put money behind other things is one way, but also just people trying to, or, you know, entities, you know, Georgetown or the university Cal system um, did this as well, putting their money somewhere else can lead us to the positive changes. So that yeah. to me is what stood out here. I mean, that's what, what I'm excited about. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you though, now, it was 65 degrees in Antarctica the other day, literally 65 <laughs> degrees, which is warmer than it was in Orlando, Florida on the same day. That's amazing. Is it too late? Um, I think probably is too late. Uh, to, to, <laughs> no, I, and I'm being serious. Um, I was very, I'll be honest, man. When I took Lie that, to me. No, lie I, to I, me. I can't. You know, I love you too much to lie to you. Um, <laughs> the truth hurts, brother. Hey, um, man. No, and this is on a serious note. Uh, when, yeah. when I took that class in 2015, I was talking five years ago now. I was sitting there. It was funny. It was spring semester. <laughs> so it was exactly five years ago. Um, that uh, So there have been fires burning in coal mines for like 100 years, man. It's, it's amazing. Uh, so there, because what happens is the earth is hot, right? So you're a couple miles down underground, and, you know, stuff happens. Guys are chiseling away. You know, they might be, you know, obviously, I'm sure electric electricity was a lot cruder back in the 1920s and 30s when guys were in coal mines. Um, or maybe they even had handheld candles or something. So, obviously, uh, fires would oh, start. That sounds right? like a disaster. So, yeah. No, so, but obviously, they needed light. So, somehow, fires would start. But it's 100 degrees down there anyway, because you're, you're, you're down in the bowels of the earth, you know, closer, getting closer to the center of the earth when you're that far in some of those mines. So the fire and, the, and, and coal is something that's flammable. But what happens is the fires aren't like lighting gasoline on fire, which is a huge explosion. It was like when you have charcoal in your grill. It's like these embers that just burn. And so what I learned in that class was um, there's, there's, I think there was a coal mine, uh, that's still burning in Pennsylvania, slow burn like that, uh, since the 1930s. Uh, the largest one in the world is a coal mine in China. There's a coal mine in India that's been burning, I think since 1916. And what they said was the one in China alone, just that one alone, that's still been burning for like 50 years, uh, contributes, uh, 3% of the carbon emission in the world comes from that one mine. And when I read that, that's when I realized, man, if everybody drove a Tesla tomorrow and we are all on solar, we've still done enough damage to the earth where there still will be just this burning of fossil fuel. And that was five years ago. Think about that. Think about how much yeah. we haven't done in five years and how much more fossil fuel we're burning. And we've doubled uh, so, down. And, and exactly. And think about it, there's at any given time around the planet, there's about 5,000 aircraft flying around. Again, all burning jet fuel. And, and burning carbon in the sky, like closer to, you know, you know, like in the air. So I just say, and that's why I say, I don't mean to sound cynical, but I do think that we have already created enough damage. We've seen it. Like you said, the temperature in Antarctica last week was higher than it was in Orlando, Florida. That doesn't make sense. Which is subtropical. We, you know, the temperature yeah, we, in a, in the south, south, southern hemisphere in the Arctic, you know, was in climate was warmer than it was in a subtropical area in the northern hemisphere, which Correct. is Correct. And, and let's just say someone can argue with us, oh, that's one example, everything, you know, can spike here and there, whatever. Okay, fine. But again, we live in South Florida. Um, you know, I, I'm a boater. We see it. I just go down here and you look at the seawalls of, of neighborhoods that were built, you know, in the 50s and, and high tide, they're underwater. And, you know, the wow. regulations, the regulations of, of, of building on the water down here in South Florida... No matter what you believe or not, there's a reason why cities, when you permit a seawall now, it's got to be five feet higher than it was just 15 years ago. The, you know, so wow. the fact is, is that the fact that those things are, are structural engineers are saying you have to do this means that the sea levels have already started rising. So it's just, you know, whether yeah. people want to believe it or not, it's happening. Well, and I'll tell you this. I, I think it's too late if the objective is to not have any change, obviously, because there has been change. Correct. Um, yeah. Now, the question yeah. of 
whether or not the change will so fundamentally argue, like whatever change, because there, we still haven't hit a peak no matter what. So, but whatever change that, whatever peak disruption there is, will make it so that it fundamentally alters the way that we live is another question. And that, I don't think anyone knows. I hope that we are able to, to kind of get the toothpaste back into the tube. Because one thing that we also know is that, you know, more plant matter would reverse this, you know? So, I mean, it it is not like this is unreversible. It just requires a lot of will and a lot of effort. But right now, you know, I know one of the big issues is that the ocean is absorbing a lot of this carbon dioxide, which you're in one, one hand, you're like, oh, great. It's not in the atmosphere because, you know, just so everyone knows, like Venus is hotter than Mercury, even though Venus is further from the sun than Mercury, but it's because Venus has um, all of these, uh, the the greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, like methane in their atmosphere. So we're kind of creating a Venus here, you know, where it just will heat up to now it won't happen right away. But this is the kind of thing that could happen with a runaway um, greenhouse gas effect where you end up with 800 yeah. degree temperatures hotter than it is in Mercury, which is right outside of the, you know, not right outside of the sun, but the closest uh, planet to the sun. So this phenomenon of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide being a big one and then methane being the, the biggest one. So, you know, oceans absorbing car- carbon dioxide. It's like, yes, that's a win. But it's like, well, actually, no, that makes the, uh, the, the pH of the oceans go down more acidic. Which is messing up ocean life, corals, and yeah. you know, we got crabs that are their shells are being eaten up, you know, by uh, by the, the acidity in the ocean. It's like, man, so how much disruption is it? Too late where we're, we'll be won't have so much disruption where it really throws off the fabric of our society. Well, I don't know. That, I, I mean, that's the open. thing. Yeah, I think it's open. That's what I'm saying. I don't know because the the. I mean, look, we're talking about climate here, but then when you're talking about the oceans, we could also talk about the microplastics and other things that 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 also kind of put a monkey wrench into into sea life and into yeah. to kind of marine life in general. Which again, the fact that this is a big ecosystem means that it's going to affect all of us at some point because you know the the the, the whales and, the, and the, the certain big animals eat plankton, right? The smallest, which is then the smallest animal. Um, so if the plankton's affected, it's going to affect the next guy who's going to be affecting the next guy. So, um, yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying, I guess, what I meant earlier, too, about climate. I mean, it's a great thing about the CO2 in the seas because it's not that we haven't had either higher or lower amounts of carbon in, in, the, in the history of the Earth. It's just that correct, those correct. changes happen a little bit slower and subtler over time. So that the ecosystem then has the ability to kind of adjust to those changes. And to your point, the the the, the article you cited, it was pretty sad to me to see that uh, the was it Dungeness crabs, yes, uh, that, out on the west that coast, that they're, they're, they're finding that um, that their shells are actually getting eaten by the acid in the ocean. It's like. So that's an example. Well, the, where, the ocean being more acidic, the ocean, the pH correct. of the ocean and, and, is changing to be a more uh, acidic. Um, state and so yeah, that, yeah, that's sad. Yeah, it's Dungeness crabs in the so, West Coast so what of the United I'm saying States. Is it, historically, right, that the acidity levels and pH levels in the ocean may have gone up and down over time, but if if those they changes took four or five thousand years, you know, to take place, or even and several hundred years, evolve. correct? You know, you have the the uh, what is it Darwin did the uh, survival of the fittest thing, right? That that over time the genetics will also change in the animal to adjust to. The um, you know, the 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 environment, but it's just that when the environment changes so fast, the 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 life form doesn't have a chance to change. And in a certain sense, right, that's that's what the fear was with the ozone hole. That if you have this the, this hole in the atmosphere, things like radiation and all that will come in and affect our bodies more. So then let's you know we yeah. can't handle a certain amount of radiation to our cells. You know, over time, we probably can. I'm talking thousands of years of human evolution. Maybe the radiation levels may have changed over the Earth. But if that all happened within a couple of decades, you know, humanity might just get wiped out. An example we of why might not nuclear, have a chance. We don't like doing things and getting uncomfortable when we feel that things are, are comfortable. And right now, there hasn't been enough pain with this climate stuff for us, I guess, as a huge human society globe, globally to agree on a certain set of factors that need to be done. Um, so I feel like this, do we have the technology, the smarts and the ability to have the seven to eight billion people on the, on the earth live in a way that the earth can be sustainable? Yes, I think you're right. Could we get to a place over the next 10 years that we could be, I don't know if we could be fully off fossil fuels, but it may be a majority. Probably yes. Would it cause pain to get there? Yes. I'm sure that there would be it a re- huge, It would require a yeah. level of will. 
It would require but, but, level but will, but it would just, just require we don't know. also a, a huge economic dislocation, all that, which is to me fine to save the planet, but I think no one wants to go through that pain. It's kind of like without getting on a whole other topic, you know, at some point, you assume rates, that it would, man. Now, hold on, you well, assume that it would have a lot of economic no, Jimmy, like, it could right make things now, better we don't have know. To, but we don't have the technology today to make a jumbo 737 fly today off of just um, electricity. You would still have to wean. So does that mean you couldn't have one in, in seven years? No, that know. doesn't mean I that. I don't know. That's Look, my point. Tune in. I don't know. The, and, it's a bigger stretch. You talk to a caveman, it's a bigger stretch to say that we went to the freaking moon than it is to say, oh, yeah, we were able to use power, use electric, make electricity from the sun. Like, th- that but, is but, but that's Jimmy, a much bigger stretch to go to the moon. But, but I'm, not, I'm not saying you can't. What I'm saying is it'll cause a dislocation because it'll just have to cause, like, capital, like we talk about, to move and, and be allocated other places where it's not being allocated now. It'll just cause a shift. I'm not saying that it's something that can't be done. I'm just saying if you're tr- going to try and force it in a, in a short period of time, it'll naturally cause dislocation of other things. And what I'm saying is... No I'm just wants- saying that that may not be a negative, though, is what I'm saying. Like, the dislocation may actually make things better. It may decentralize resources a little bit more. It may decentralize power a little bit more. Yeah, and some all I'm saying like is, that. I don't I mean, know, but what I'm saying is I'd be willing to go through any a pain if it were to cause a pain just to make sure the Earth's healthy. You're right. Maybe it wouldn't cause a pain. I'm just saying, for me, the Earth is more important or no, than it, it, the economy. What I'm saying is, is it um, may move things in a positive way. For, that's all I'm saying. But let's, yeah, let's I mean, you, you're um, right. we, we keep going in circles on this. But, but Correct. The, That's, but the don't thing assume is, is, that um, it would always be bad. No, and, and, and the thing is, though, is that, so, so getting back at to, to kind of the topic at hand is, that's what I'm saying is that either we're going to make those choices, because I've read different studies that, you know, if based on our own technology now, that the world could probably handle up to 12 to 13 billion people if we got super efficient with everything we're talking about. Now, so I feel like either we got to make a choice to go that direction or the earth is going to make the choice for us, which means that through all this, this climate change with a huge population that keeps getting bigger, we're going to have more things like the hurricane that ravaged the Bahamas and Puerto Rico. We're going to have more people living in places where there's earthquakes. We're going to have more pandemics, more viral outbreaks. So what's going to happen is the earth will make a human correction, just like a stock market correction when the business community gets too out of whack. Human beings will get too out of whack, and the Earth, just through this natural stuff happening, is going to say, okay, the population is going to go from 8 billion to 4 billion as a correction just because, you know, there's going to be that many natural disasters and potentially pandemics. Well, I mean, that, and it's done it before. I mean, that, that's, yeah, exactly. Um, you so, look at the history of Europe, and you got, you know, the plague, and, right. you know, things like that. So, Black and, and I guess where, what, what I'm saying is that this might, and it's a good point you make up because as you said that, it made me realize. This may be the first time that as humanity, we may be able to choose which direction we go, right? Because when it was the plague and all that, humanity wasn't educated enough en masse to understand what these things were. They you know, didn't know that they made choices. You know, they got rats running around and stuff, but they didn't know the, the consequence but, of those choices. But also, they not didn't know that the rats might like be that. actually carrying the disease. You know, like they just didn't have that kind of like... The That's what I'm saying. They, didn't, yeah. they, they, they made choices, but they they didn't know the consequence of those choices. You know, Correct. like by not and, and they didn't know washing hands would prevent stuff, or that Correct. rats would carry disease, or things like that. Correct. So and, and now yeah. we know, and now we actually you're right. So this might be the first time in we human know history in where where we are staring down the barrel of a gun, meaning the climate issue that will take us out. And we have a chance to do something about it, and let's see what we choose to do with it. I mean, I guess we're in the process of seeing how the choice gets played out over this kind of period of time. But it, that's why I'm cynical about yeah. it, because it's just, you know, it's sad. I, w- I wish that, you know, the, it, it wasn't such a heavy lift. But I do think, let's put it this way, to be positive, maybe let me not be so <laughs> doomsday about it. Over the last 20 years, clearly society has, has moved a lot on this issue, right? I remember when it wasn't even 20 years ago, what was it, 2004, when Al Gore came out with that documentary, An Inconvenient Truth? Yeah. And I'd say a large percentage of our population laughed them off. I, I don't think a large percentage of the population are laughing anymore. Um, now, the argument, people that used to deny it existed at all, may, they have moved now to maybe accepting it exists, but now they still... They haven't been able to be, be persuaded that humans might be causing it. So one could say maybe there's some progress in the argument that most people are accepting that this is happening. But I think, you know, that the argument still with a lot of people is the cause. 
Um, and I think you're right. It's 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 industry that 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 benefits short term from um, still not being environmentally friendly have been able to manipulate enough people in the population to, to, to not buy into it. But I think this is changing rapidly. I mean, I was, I was um, hardened by the fact in the last few weeks, you know, BlackRock, which is the world's largest asset manager, uh, they managed around $7 trillion. Um, the CEO just basically came out and went nuts uh, on air and, and kind of been doing this whole press push saying, we need to get a control of, of climate change because it's going to change the nature of finance and capital markets. And um, the, the reason why I say that's, that's an interesting sign and to me a positive sign is because with $7 trillion under their management, they're the largest shareholder in every asset class in the market. So yeah. they do have influence. You know, they are in boardrooms. They are shareholders of big corporations. Yeah, and, so. and as, I, as I was saying... No, as I was saying with the Georgetown piece and how, you know, the university's doing that, you, you, University of Cal system doing that, that's how the change happens. You know, more than anything is people starting to put money or, or move money in response to it saying, hey, okay, well, we're going to pull out of this, our investments of this and put our investments over here. And that's where that change starts to happen because then the behaviors of the fossil fuel industry, if they're continuing to um, go about things as they always have, will become less lucrative. And that's what changes the behavior more so, much more so than, you know, the government trying to do it from the top down. It's all about trying to find loopholes or catch me if you can. But when it comes from the bottom line, from the money being moved out of there, that's where you'll see change. So I, I think yeah. we've, we've hit this pretty good. And I mean, we're going to come back to this, obviously, but the, the, the noting of money being moved, I think we wanted to bring attention to and just point out how that is encouraging, you know, like yeah. whether it's too late or not, you know, we'll see and how much disruption is required if we continue the same course, because that's the other thing you have to weigh in terms of the pain when you talk about that is continuing the course is going to be pain, changing course is going to be pain, but has potential for reward as well. There's no potential right. for reward on continuing course. It's just going to be going straight to the right route of pain. Another One other thing I wanted to talk about today actually was... Um, the, the use of facial recognition technology yeah. and how that's exploded. And recently, there, there's been discussion on and articles written. I know the New York Times did a piece last month on Clearview AI, which is a company that claims to have scraped three billion images off the Internet, primarily social media, you know, things like that. Um, and they, they sell it to law enforcement and other people, potentially authoritarian regimes and things like that. Whoever knows, intelligence services probably, they claim they sell it to over 600 law enforcement agencies where basically you put in a picture of somebody and they can pull up that, that person's name and all about them based on just their picture. You know, so it's, it's word searching, but from a face you know, it's, it's, you know, word searching we're yeah. accustomed to with Google, but you put in somebody's picture and you can see all this stuff about them. Um, now, this obviously, it, it right now it is still in its developmental phases, but this obviously could be something that could be used eventually. Like you got wearable tech, glasses and things like that. Um, that's already an integration that's been discussed where you wear glasses and then anybody you look at, you can pull up who that is based on their face. Like not just famous people, but anybody. Um, thoughts, man. What do you think about this? This is like, uh, it's fascinating. is this the end um, of the world? No, I mean, I don't know. That's, 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 uh, I'm not paid enough. That's way beyond my pay grade to answer that one. But, <laughs> but no, but, um, no, yeah, look, it's just fascinating, right? It's another, sh just look into the fact that technology continues to disrupt what we once thought was normal. And again, this is another thing. And what I would say, what we once thought was normal was the idea that we as individuals had some level of privacy. Um, you're right. I mean, yeah. I'm sure three billion images off the internet, I, I would almost, be a hundred percent certain that some picture of you and me is within that three billion images, like you said, because we're just. Oh, I'm certain. We have Facebook accounts. I'm on. I'm still you know, on Facebook. Yeah, I mean. so I'm, just, I'm stuck. I'm sure that it's been scraped. So what does that mean? I don't know. Um, and and it's just again more uh, ability for. Um, I don't want to get into like the whole dr draconian or Orwellian thing of control and the big governments and all that. Clearly, that that is a potential you know use for it and, and potential uh, use for harm as well. Um, but I think it's it's in in another sense it's it's again it's this eroding of of ourselves having any control, like we as individuals having any control over our our own kind of just us. Like, uh, and I don't want to say destiny, but I would say just who I am. And what, what I would be fearful of a bit more is the ability to have that information compromised. 
So let's say, because you're right, it, it is getting to where at some point in the next probably 20, 30 years, we'll, we'll have the technology. It's almost unbelievable because this was the stuff of fantasy and sci-fi when you and I were growing up. But yeah, you could put on a pair of glasses, walk down the street like in, um, what was that movie, Minority Report back in the day. And, and all these things will be feeding into your eyeballs, um, almost like yeah. a he- heads-up display just constantly. And, yeah, yeah. someone, you see uh, a face. Not, that's not 20 years, man. That's like two years. Yeah, no, but you see years. a face yeah. and all this information, almost like the, the LinkedIn and Facebook profile, but it now it just correct. comes up through your sunglasses or something. So, and not um, because you typed anything, correct. but just, just because you looked up. at their so, face, yeah. That's what I'm saying is suppose someone could hack your profile that goes out on that global network, let's say, and and could just put fictitious things about you or lying about you or things that you wouldn't want to know. And that's where I think, um, you know, we, we're, we're kind of come into a new danger zone because it, this is a different slightly topic, but it all kind of goes together, which is, you know, then you got things like those deep fakes, right? Where yeah. the technology is so good that they can take images and voiceovers and create fake audio and video so now let's say someone wants to put all that out about you and that comes up in your profile that you're this or that kind of person. I mean, those are the way that I think that this can become dangerous that society has not dealt with before. And this is, again, like we talked about in other subjects just recently, is this technology is going to continue to disrupt our society in a way that we cannot predict, just like we couldn't predict 20 years ago. It goes back to the other show. Well, when, when I would I, push back on you on that, uh, man. Um, in some ways, we can predict. Like, this is already, like, you see, I don't know if you see images of the protesters in, in Hong Kong sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see them wearing masks. Yeah. Not, like, health masks, but, like, masks. And the reason for that is because of this type of thing. Yeah. Because China will deploy that against them and try to figure out who these people are that are at these protests and try to use that against them so this is already here no you know, I know, it's a matter of- i just think that whatever we think that people might not accept just 10 years from now we we can't be so certain anymore because of the exponential growth in this technology and what it's it just kind of um desensitized us to a lot of things that i think just a generation ago we were very as human humanity we were very sensitive to and so that's why it's just well, it's yeah, fascinating. and then the norms the norms change as well, and you know right. people have a sliding scale as far as what they believe in a yeah. lot of times. And so you know you hope, like in a scenario like this, that our frame of framework of government, you know, like separation of powers, constitutional rights, things like that, can withstand a lot because the type of stuff where you're using people's image to oppress them for political views or anything like that. It could come up yeah. right now, you know, like, and so hopefully we, we have a situation where we have a, 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 a structure in place in our nation where that can't be deployed against us. Um, but those things have to be defended. But though. we don't you know, know like, if it's being deployed against us already. I mean, that's the crazy thing. And I think, you know, you're absolutely right. And what I really believe it's, it becomes a trade off between kind of us uh, as a society and a culture and what like what makes our lives easier. And I think, unfortunately, we've, we've traded a lot of that off because this technology has made life so much easier for us. Um, just like we, it comes, all of the, the, we make all these deals correct, for the free yeah, service. Exactly. Like you we make the these free deals. Facebook like, account. I've thought about yeah. this. Like, I remember when I was learning to drive, I had one of those books that was the map that had like the grid, you know? So I had to, like, if yeah. I wanted to go see my friend who lived on, you know, 123 XYZ Street, for example, I had to look, like, in the table of contents or the legend in the back, find XYZ Street. It would say, go to page 41 and look at E uh, and uh, F2 or something, right? And I had to go back and go to page 41 and look at the grid, and then I had to go look at the book while I'm driving, you know. Now that's all on my phone. So that made my yeah. life a lot easier to have it all on my phone, so then you don't pay for it. I don't really pay, you don't pay for it. I don't service. feel I pay extra. Exactly. And and so now that makes my life easier. So I kind of don't want to go back from that because I don't want to have to start looking at books and all that. And I like that the Bluetooth talks to me in the car and, you know, makes me safer because I can have both hands on the wheel. But what am I giving up for that? Anywhere my phone is, I'm immediately traceable. So yeah. that's a piece of privacy that used to be mine and now no longer is. Now where you were going correct. and where you are. And now now um, they can and again, it's not just about me sitting here doing this show with you, right? Someone can track who I am through the metadata of where I've been. What if I spend an hour every Wednesday at a psychiatrist's office? They're gonna know I got some issue, right? What if I go to a doctor's a certain time? What if I go to, you know, a urologist once a week? They're gonna know I'm gonna have that issue. So 
it's 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 the ability it's not just where i am at the moment it's going back and looking if someone were to really want to get in my life is not too difficult with all this metadata that these breadcrumbs i keep leaving any, everywhere unintentionally yeah i, wanted, I don't want to stray too far from yeah, go um, <laughs> the, the clear view the facial recognition and the clear view um, piece you know one of the reasons why or the reason why this really uh, jumped on uh, to my radar this week was because big tech companies twitter facebook uh, you know, those type of uh, companies, uh, YouTube, uh, with Google through YouTube, you know, Facebook with Instagram, uh, sent, and, and then I guess Microsoft with LinkedIn, they sent cease and desist letters to Clearview AI saying, get off of our platforms. You're, you're violating the terms of service. You can't get on here and start <laughs> scraping for data and things like that, which is an interesting it's place ironic. for them to yeah, come yeah, from. Because they're scraping yeah, our yeah, data. They, I'm thinking you, like, yeah. Exactly. They, <laughs> now, we give it to them. I know. Well, we give it to them, though. You know, like, so... We, they, but they give us the service for free. So when there's an exchange there where they're giving us a free service. Twitter, Twitter's giving you a free publishing platform for your thoughts and everything that you say and all the images you post. You know, they license or they get a license. Either they own it and you license or whatever. But Clearview AI is just saying, hey, they're just jumping in. Yoink, we're going to take all this stuff. They're not, they're, there's no exchange there. So they do have a point from a legal standpoint. But Nonetheless, the irony is not lost on us that, hey, you're, you're figuring out all the ways you can exploit all our information, but then you're telling these guys not to do it. But you know what? I'm with it. You know, tell these guys to get up off of my, off of it. Like I voluntarily gave my information to Facebook or to whoever. I didn't give it to Clearview AI. And so if that, that that's a violation of their terms, I'm with, you know, hey, get, get them up off of that. Get them out the paint. But, you know, once you put something on the internet, though, you know, you all almost have to assume then that it is everywhere at that point, that anybody can get it. And, you know, like at that point, you've lost control of yeah. it. So what were your thoughts on that, though, with, with Big Tech step, stepping in and on, on the behalf of their people and saying, hey, you know, don't take this data from us? Yeah, it, again, it's another fascinating look at again, You keep hearing me say it, this morphing from in, industrial to information age. And I mean, maybe this is what kind of corporate warfare looks like in the information age. You know, that the battle is no longer, you know, the mercenaries fighting over some land in a third world country uh, between two big oil companies. You know, who's going to get the, the, to, to, the to, to drill here first type of thing. You know, the battle is now for for who's getting access to our information. Um, and I don't think I agree with you. It's like, well, I, and remember, information, information has surpassed. You know, all other Correct. things in terms of value. That now, is you know? the like, greatest so commodity. That, that makes sense. And, and so, yeah. And yeah. so, again, that, like you're saying, that, that com- whether it was, you know, sugar plantations in the 1700s or oil fields in the 20th century, now it's, now it's data, right? So, so that is yeah. the battle. That is the battleground. And, it's, and that's why it's funny. I, say, I smile when you say, you know, about the big tech companies because it's true. They're not really doing this for us. They're doing this to protect their own... Their own um, you know, they're putting a moat around their, their own, bottom line. Their bottom line, because if if this company yeah. can go and start scraping at no cost the information that they're trying to sell out there, then their that information is longer longer valuable if someone else is getting it for free from them and selling it. So, you know, they can't make the same Correct. profit margin on it. So, they're what they'll do is they'll take these guys to court. They'll sue them somehow. They'll you know because they've already lobbied the government enough and they've got everyone in their pocket. They'll figure out how to win. And, and this company, because this company, I'm sure, has juice, but when you got Google, Facebook, Apple, all the big fang companies, the, the real money power now in today's um, kind of uh, economic landscape going after you, they'll basically work out some deal in some court where this company now has to pay them for, you know, downloading pictures and all that. And, they'll, you know, one penny a picture or something. So when you add up three billion images, you know, everyone will cut up some money. And that'll be how it is. And they'll drive up their costs when they're selling it to the, to the autocrats and to the intelligence agencies. And so, <laughs> you know, sorry, sorry and, for and, my and cynicism, just but to, that's just how it'll well, work no, out. No. <laughs> but you, you have to connect and, all that. And, because but see, let me just the, finish real quick. The, the, the people that won't win will be us who will still have our data and our images out there being processed by who knows who and being used for who know what. So... Sorry, that, that just wanted to finish that. Part. No, no, that we're, was, we're, that we're, was we're what, that's what you we're, had to we're, say. We're the ones who won't win. So keep buying. Yeah, we are the ones who, yeah, everybody else will get paid and we will not. So I'm, it's I'm our, not, our data. And I'm not giving financial advice here to any compliance lawyers listening. Just want to be very careful. But this is why <laughs> I do believe that capital will continue to flow into the tech space because of what you just said. Data is the commodity of our time. 
just like once it was oil or gold or sugar or whatever other commodities were. Maybe it was tea, you know, and, and spices from India back in, you know, the, the, the beginnings of, of, of the colonial periods in, in Europe. Uh, but today it's data. Or, and, or as you like to, um, to point out often lately, seashells. Seashells, yeah. So, but today it's data. <laughs> and who controls the data? It's a, it's, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of data out there, but the majority of it is controlled by, you know, a, a, a finite number of, of tech companies. So I just think that, that, that they'll continue to control a lot of capital. The money will continue to go there through the government contracts and through all of us buying and going on their sites and then being able to sell our information behind the scenes to others for, for corporate reasons or for malicious reasons, you know, just for mar- regular marketing reasons that companies want our data and want to know how we shop so they can market to us. And then there's the more sinister reasons that you said, like authoritarian governments trying to shut down, um, you know, dissent and things like that. So, th- but, 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 the, but the center of it all will be these few mega tech companies who have all of that data and all that power. So that's why I just think that, you know, again, not trying to give, you know, stock advice here or anything like that specifically to any company, but I just think the tech sector in general will continue to profit from all of this activity. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I mean, no, and that, that, that's, that's the point, you know, is that the, 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 the big companies will find a way to win from it, you know, like they're protecting their turf right now so that they can continue to, to, to keep those revenue streams open. Because, I mean, the thing is, is if one person starts taking it without paying, then other people start Correct. taking other and they're parts gonna of defend it. Their, and then ultimately yeah, they're, they're going to defend their, their, their bottom line through defending the ability of, of companies like this, this new one to be able to go in there and just freely use their platforms to then go make their own profit as a company. They're gonna, they're gonna definitely shut that down. <laughs> that's why I said they'll probably win yeah, that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, like that. So that's in, in the scenario you end up in. You know, like where they're gonna fight over who has the right to sell data about us. Yeah. And um, you know, so the, the the real loser there, or the one who does, has no stake in the game, there's no path to victory for is us, unless and until you know through through policy, through through legal action. Uh, we are able to establish a some right to the data that uh, is about us, you know, individually. And, you know, that's something that there's efforts yeah. of that in Europe right now. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but from there, I think we're going to call it a day. Um, you know, it, it's an issue, though, that we have to keep an eye on, though, because, I mean, it's one of those things, again, where we are the commodity, you know, like the, the data is us. It's about us. And we are what's being bought and sold. And, you know, it's, it's information we're freely given. You know, I always wonder whether we're given it freely in the sense that we know exactly to the extent it's going to be used. But nonetheless, it is. It's not they're not putting can Well, they're not putting cameras and microphones in your house without your knowledge. You're putting cameras and microphones in your house. And, yeah. you know, they're not, you know, like it, it, coming in and, and reading your computer, what, what, what information you're, you're looking at on the computer. You're asking Google, you know, hey, show me this, show me that. And so all of that stuff is information that's freely given. But there's a lot, as you pointed out, there's a lot you can learn about somebody and what they do based on that information. So um, from there, you know, we definitely want to say, we, as always, we appreciate you guys joining us um, as we, we navigate through some of these and meander through <laughs> some of these topics. Uh, you know, it, until next time, I'm James Keys. I'm Tunde Wilmana. All right. Thank you. Subscribe. Great review.